Howdy there, it's David Duford at davidduford.com, where I coach, recruit, and train insurance agents to become successful producers in my agency, selling things like final expense, Medicare Advantage, and annuities. Thank you for joining me today. So today we're going to talk about five-letter word that uh, wreaks havoc upon especially new and uh, unsuspecting agents, and that's scams. Insurance agency scams they don't want you to know about, yes. I'm going to pull back the curtain and show you what goes on beyond, behind the scenes when it comes to uh, the things you should be aware of uh, when, before you sign that agency contract of the uh, insurance company you think uh, is super cool. So the reason I'm putting this together is because new agents tend to have ignorance. And that's not a negative way of me saying it. They just don't know what they don't know. And none of us did when we got started. Uh, most of us were brought into this business because someone else we knew was having success and they brought us into their downline. And before we know it, there are so many contingencies and issues that now we're kind of stuck working for this organization that we may not feel super happy about. So the job I am doing for you today is to uncover all those issues. If you're at the point where you're thinking about selling final expense, or really any insurance products that you just make sure that you review the contract and know what to look for. Remember, this dude on your screen who has the sunglasses on is not a lawyer. Don't take my advice as being the least bit serious. I'm an insurance agent after all. What would I know? So with that said, let me go through here and go over the most important aspects you should be concerned about before you get started with any insurance agency. And some of these are going to be legit scams. Some of them won't be. They're just stupid things and contracts that can really screw you over. Okay, so number one, vesting. What is vesting? The best way to explain vesting is ownership. In an independent fashion, meaning if you're in an independent agent and you write a piece of business, you own that business. That client's yours, okay? You continue to get paid on it. Even if you separate your relationship with the agency, it's your client. You can go back and sell that client some more insurance if you want to. The problem is there's organizations that do not vest you from the first day. They claim to give you a lot of great benefits of working with the organization, but ultimately you're developing clientele for them. And if you leave, you may lose out on the vesting privileges that you would have had if you had stayed. This means that you would lose income, your as earns, your renewal commissions, things that pay passively. And uh, all this work you did was for nothing. This is especially egregious with a couple of companies I can think of that operate in the final expense business, but also that operate uh, really just in the general middle market uh, sales business. There's one company I know of, I've recruited a couple guys from, they have literally a 10-year vesting period. You don't own your book for 10 years. You progressively own 10% each year, and then before you're fully owned at the 10th year problem with that is that you got to do all the work, you're generating all the referrals, but you're leaving all this business behind to your uplines because they're the ones that ultimately get paid if you get terminated. And what happens if your relationship with the agency changes or the company changes? Uh, the managers turn out to be complete crap. The promises they made weren't kept. The drama, the politics, companies change even. And they've got the right to pull the plug and take your money because it really wasn't your money, because it wasn't vested. And the thing is, with these insurance agencies and companies, the, you'll read through that since you're probably a 1099 contracted independent contractor, they can terminate your agreement at will for whatever reason. So you're at their complete mercy. Now tell me that makes any sense whatsoever, because most of the reasons people get involved in the insurance business is to create a business. It's to free yourself from making uh, someone else rich to make yourself rich in some, in some fashion that's true for most of us. My recommendation, don't join an agency that, vest, that doesn't vest you immediately. Agents that work with me, always 100% vested from the first day. Why? Because you're a business owner. You should own your clients. You shouldn't have any restrictions imposed upon you. That's ridiculous. Number two, non-compete. This kind of goes hand in glove with the vesting issue, if you have a uh, non-compete issue, you may be uh, 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 eliminated from selling geographically in an area 
<clears throat> or selling to clients. Now, I will say where I believe a non-compete makes sense is if the organization is providing you leads and um, you're getting them at no cost, they're probably going to start saying, well, you know, you can't go back and write all these people and, and roll the business over to a new type of carrier. I get that. But the problem is, is that if you're paying at cost on your dime for leads and the clientele or the agency says that, well, you know, you're uh, uh, you, that's our clients, you know, that's that's for us. And I think that's a bit ridiculous. So I would advise if that's the case, again, read the contract. If you see non-compete uh, run, they're trying to own you. OK, you're a business owner. Hello. Nobody owns you. Maybe your clients are your bosses, but these people shouldn't be. So and then if you ever see any non-compete for uh, you can't sell people in the general area, that's a bunch of crap, too. I don't even know if that stuff holds up anymore. It's mostly used as a scare tactic. But uh, again, that's going to that kind of law varies state to state. But uh, just seeing that stuff turns me off. It should for you, too. Number three, this is a good one, line of authority only. What does line of authority or LOA mean? Line of authority means that instead of the insurance company paying you, it's that the insurance agency does. And essentially, what that means is that you are now at full mercy to the insurance agency paying you on time and accurately. And they also get to dictate the terms of the commission as opposed to it being a level commission that the insurance company pays you directly when the payment is made and outside the realm of being manipulated uh, at will of the agency. The other thing is with that, many times if you're a line of authority agent, you're writing the business in the name of the agency, so you don't own the business, and you're probably going to have a non-compete uh, stuck with that too. So again, what's the option instead of being a line of authority agent? Uh, I want you guys to be and a completely contracted agent where the company pays you. That way, you know, the company generally does a really good job paying commissions accurately and uh, makes sure that there's no funny business with another entity involved. And uh, it comes with, in many cases, as we'll talk about, immediate vesting as well as, uh, well, a non-compete is kind of a thing that could or couldn't be an issue. Number four is no releases. So a release means that if you're working with independent companies, you have the ability to move those carriers to another agency organization. You see, it's the carriers at the top, the agency in the middle, and then you at the bottom. You send your contracts through the agency to the carrier, but what if that agency turns out to be a bunch of uh, crappy people and you don't want to work for them, but you like the carrier? Well, the thing is, is that the agency always has the right to withhold a release if it determines that's the case. Basically, your upline owns you unless and they have the option of keeping you on or letting you go. And if you say they won't let you go, they won't release you, then you have to stop producing with the carrier for six months before you're eligible to be basically a free agent like in baseball and or, or sports and then move your association to another organization. So a release is the way to sever that relationship immediately. This is something that I give to all of my agents. And the reason is, is because I don't want to hamstring an agent that doesn't ultimately want to be in my organization. It hurts sometimes when I lose an agent and I wonder what did I do wrong. But many times, sometimes people just find out that it's just not a good fit. And why keep someone held hostage? I only want a people that want to would have in my business. I only want people in my business that want to work with me and partner with me where it is a good fit. I don't want to hold people against their will. It's never been my thing. And it shouldn't be for any other agency. Just, just think about it. You know, if some guy doesn't service you and he doesn't do a good job for you, think of all the problems that could happen. Every agency puts their best foot forward and delivers the best presentation of themselves that they can. Well, what happens if uh, they actually turn out to be, you know, complete crap? Well, you're stuck. So always look for organizations that will give releases I do, other ones do. I can tell you which ones don't in many cases, and but make that special consideration before you decide to join. Number five, watch out for the low commission opportunities out there. There are organizations that start agents at 50, 60, 70 points. 
make them a percentage commission, make them pay 30 to $35 a lead. That's a highway robbery. It's going to be very hard to stay, stay financially solvent in those conditions. Uh, don't join those organizations. They're just there to take your money, write some business, and then watch you wash out as the next sucker rolls in. And then number six, uh, watch out for uh, shit leads. This is a big scam in the insurance business, uh, otherwise known as uh, crappy leads, resold leads, or aged leads. Not that there's anything wrong with using these leads from time to time to fill a gap, but the problem is, like a lot of organizations, the big MLMs especially, will sell you on buying leads that have already been visited by their agents a multitude of times, possibly even sold, or they were, they're months, even years old. And the problem of having old and worked leads is just there's a diminishing return on results. What you should strive for instead are fresh and exclusive leads, leads that are never resold and leads that were just made, okay? I do that. That's important to my agents. I want to put them in a position to where they're getting the best results as they can, as much as possible. Again, when you start in the insurance business, you want to line up your opportunities and edges for success in your favor for everything as much as possible. Anything that you leave to chance, it's going to reduce your chances of success. Don't shortchange yourself. That's the big thing as, as why I'm putting this video together. This business looks good and everybody who's recruiting puts their best foot forward to make this thing look incredible. But be aware that that is the best presentation of what it is that you're going to see the, the, in, in that first presentation. And it's not what people say or the Kool-Aid that is dispensed. It is what the contract says and what the successful agents who produce say about the organization. Always take time to review the agency contract, the carrier contracts, and anything else that you have to sign before you decide to join. I promise you it's more likely now that there's some hidden catch uh, in the contract that's going to trip you up if you jump the gun too early. I've talked to too many people that have become hamstrung in a contract that can't get out of it. And they're frustrated because they're getting ripped off. And they're even more frustrated because they can't move their carriers. And if they decide to move, they'll lose all their commissions because they're not fully vested. This uh, business uh, can be rough. And the more knowledge you have, the more power you have to negotiate. And really just spend time finding trustworthy organizations that wouldn't even think about screwing you over. And that's what I do at DavidDuford.com. Shameless plug for myself, I recruit agents nationally, predominantly in final expense, but also in Medicare Advantage and annuity and some other products too as well. Check them out. Uh, I have the, a very fair setup with commissions. Vesting is 100%. I release as long as a client or an agent doesn't owe me chargeback money. Uh, the clients are yours. There's no non-competes. You're direct to the company. There's no line of authority issues to worry about. Commissions are great, and you get access to high-quality leads. It's everything you need to have in your corner to be potentially successful. Of course, I couldn't guarantee you're going to be successful, nor can anybody say that. But at least you're starting off with the best overall opportunity. So thank you so much for joining. Again, go to DavidDuford.com if you'd like to learn more, and we'll see you later. Y'all take care. Bye.